that. Okay, okay, I'm gonna go live. So hello and welcome to the first deep dive of 2021. If you are watching live, please note that this demo is being recorded. So if you have any problems with the live stream, you can watch back at a later stage. Um, just some preliminary testing before we began um, indicated that it was a small bit rocky today, but hopefully it will stay with us. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to drop a message into the YouTube live chat or the Foreman channel on Freenode IRC, and I'll ask them to Partha if there are continuing trouble, uh, if there are continuing issues or any issues with the live stream, and you want to join us, um, I can drop in the Meet link as well at any time. That is not a problem. Um, a large part of this demo is going to be on a terminal. If the terminal size is too small for you, just please let us know and we'll increase it. It's just the output can get a little um, wonky if we increase the size too much, but just let us know and we will do our best to accommodate. And I think that's everything from me, Partha, if you'd like to um introduce yourself and what you plan to uh, talk about thank you melanie uh yeah my name is partha aji uh, i'm one of the developers who worked on the import export feature with catello 318 for pulp 3. Uh, we have a big team there uh you can get in touch with me either by my email paj at redhat.com or or on the free node i'm part of the free node the, the foreman dev uh you can also join, ask me questions from the community forum and we we keep we keep fairly we, we we keep tabs on that fairly often here so today i'll briefly go over the agenda but I'll briefly go over import and export why what is the use case for this or who who might want to use it. I'll then do like a live demo, demo some of the hammer commands that that pertain to import and export. And finally, I'll go over some of the quirks in the right now, quirks and things that we are still working on. Uh, so, but so let, let me start the first, let me start over with the, the by briefly going over the import and export. Uh, it's a second. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, so import and export. The, the idea here is you have two Catello instances that are disconnected, as in, as in the upstream, ha upstream is connected to CDN, syncing from the CDN, the upstream is syncing from custom repositories, so the upstream Catello instance has that. While the, while the downstream is disconnected from the, from, the, from the outside world, outside world, so that so he, the downstream can't even connect, connect to the upstream instance here. So, so what the process we use to synchronize content between these two satellites or these two Catello instances is via the import, export and import mechanism. You basically do an export of whatever you want, whatever version, or whether you want the libraries or other repositories and that. So you do an export, you do an export of that, you take that, you take the generated tar GZ and finally copy the tar GZ to downstream and upload it there. So imported. Imported. Uh, So some of the quirks I had in terms of slides was, so this is, this is first of all, this, this is applicable only for Pulp3 repositories. So if you have a new installation of Catello and that's using Pulp3 for yum, then only then these commands, these commands are related to that. Uh, uh, you can, moreover, you can export or import yum content only at this point, we, we haven't, worked out other architecture, other types yet. Uh, you can also, you can export only like the is immediately synced repositories. That means if you have like a lazy or on-demand repositories, you really can't sync those. 
So if the export will command will ignore ignore those, they'll just it'll just put a warning and ignore if you have any lazy synced repositories. Finally, you can export as far as the functionality is concerned, you can export content view versions. So you can say, hey, I in this content view version has all these 20 packages or, or 20 repositories. Export, export this particular version. And you can you can on the other hand, you can also export the library repository itself, the library environment itself. So in the library environment, we have all the repositories that you have been syncing. Uh, so you can you can choose to export that. There you can you, you can either choose to export the entire library or you can choose to limit it to a specific content view version. Those are the two choices. We also have added functionality to do things like uh, splitting export tar GCs into smaller chunks. Uh, we have a chunk size parameter. I will actually be demoing that also. And you can you can either do a complete or an incremental export. Uh, these will become clear when I run the commands. But when you do when you when you do a comp complete, you get you get the full export. You get so if your version had five repositories and each had like 10 G, 10, 100 megabytes of content, you would you would get you would get five you would basically get a 500 megabyte output. Similarly, you can do an incremental. So the idea you can also do an incremental. Uh, incremental export just says, hey, you previously imported a different version. You, let me just do the deltas for you. So if you had like version two or version three of a content view and your downstream satellite or downstream Catello instance had had a had version two, oh, you can say you can just choose to say, I want to do an incremental export between version two and three O and only give the deltas there. So it, it should be a much smaller size export. Uh, we'll, I'll be demoing this again. It, it'll become amply clearer then, hopefully. Yeah, now coming to the quirks. Uh, you can export a composite content view, but it'll need to be imported as a regular content view, uh, an import only content view in a downstream server. Uh, this is this might this might seem a bit odd, but this the, this makes more sense because you you get the full ex you you are able to get the full content in a composite content view. You can you're able to get all the content there in the uh, that you can import. So I'm I'm. I'm going to do a demo. I'm going to start doing the demo now. So let's I'm doing the live live demo. So here's my upstream content view. You see, you see the list of products I have here. Uh, prod, and this has three repositories, as you see, kind of been Catello and Misk. I I made three custom repositories. They could be Red Hat repositories, also it doesn't matter. I also have a content view here in this organization. Yeah, very generic view <laughs> sounding. Uh, okay. Anyway, uh, here are three versions I have. So version 1.0, version 1.0, as you can see, has 26 packages, eight errata, 15 module streams. Version 2 has 65 packages, and version 3 has 39 packages. Let me also go to the details just to highlight some couple of things. So version 1.0 has two repositories. Version 2.0 has three repositories, right? And version 3.0 has just one. So each in each of the, you know, when generating these versions, I added and removed repositories. Uh, this is important just to show you when I do the import. Uh, so let, let me go over the command line a little bit. So you see the use, uh, let me find it here, yeah. 
you'll see these two new subcommands, content export and content import. This is, these subcommands are what we'll be using to export export to disconnected Catello. So let me. And these have, there you see, the, you have these two subcommands, complete and incremental. These are the two. Uh, so the so if you want to export a version com fully, you would say you'd use the complete subcommand. If you want to just uh, do an incremental export, you would use a, in the incremental subcommand. So. So as you, as you can see, these have two subcommands, library and version. And you can use these to export either the library or a specific content view version. So let me get started with exporting one of the content view versions. Uh, the let's let's uh, let's export. Let me sorry. Let me export version 1.0. And you can see the ID is three here. Uh, we could, there are, yeah, yeah. So, okay. Camera content export complete, right? So, uh, version. Let me just do a quick help on that. There you see you can you can send in different parameters. There's this chunk size MB parameter. There's this content view parameter. You can also give it a content view version ID if you wanted. Here, you could also give it. You could also say, hey, get me the version that that was promoted to the dev environment. For example, using this. So let me. We start the thing. So hammer complete version. So I say the car we know we identify the content view version. I IDS three. So that's why I just want to show you that first. Uh, wait, hold on. Oh, sorry, I'm the wrong satellite. Oh, my bad. <laughs> That's this is the downstream. This is the one where I'm going to be importing. It obviously doesn't have version ID three yet. Sorry. Uh, let me do that here again. There you go. So this should this should export the content view. Uh, so let us. So it says it generated a file. Generated this file. Uh, let's do a. Hammer content export list. So this should show us a list of the export history. Basically, it should show us a list of exports. Uh, sorry for the formatting. I had to increase the screen size, so so it's messing up, messing with the tab, the format, the command output. So let let's see what is here in this directory. There you go. So you see, there's forty nine megabytes of of targz. There's also this file called, there's a file called the TOC JSON. And there's this file called the metadata JSON that's generated by uh, Catalo or Foreman. Let, let's see what's there in that. You kind of has an interesting, it has the organization name. It has what is called a repository mapping. Uh, which is used by Catello again, uh, an incremental false and the location, the name of the TOC file. Okay. Now, I want to highlight the uh, chunk size parameter. 
So I'll I'll do that also. So if I say just a second, let's see help again here. So it's called the parameters called chunk size MB here. So so let I we know that it's a 49 megabyte RGG. So let's so let's let's break it down to smaller in, in reality it'll be in gigabytes if you exported a rel8 or something like that so let, let's uh, just to demo it i'm going to i'm going to say hey break it into 10 mb uh 10 10 break it uh, chunk it into 10 mb smaller tar gcs So we can again look here. Uh, let me copy this. Yeah, yeah. So, so you can see it broke this into multiple targz files. There's zero, 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 one, two, three, and four. Now, the next. Next thing I wanted to demo was the incremental export. All right. So let me, let me clear the screen again. So you can see that, as, as I pointed out, version 2.0 has, uh, version 2 has six, 65 packages. And I think it just has one extra repo over this. So even though it has 65 packages, uh, it the, the difference between version 1.0 and version 2.0. I think version 1.0 has candle pin and MISC, while version 2.0 has candle pin, MISC, and Catello. So there's this has three repositories. Now, I could do a complete export again and import that, but that would that would result in a file that's much in a, a much larger that's that's bigger that's larger so instead i just want the i just want the deltas i just want what changed between these two versions so that's where the incremental commands come in so if i do hammer content export incremental you, you see they're the same two library and version commands here. So I can incrementally export a version or incrementally export all the repositories in the library. So if I did hammer content export incremental version and sorry. Uh, sorry, incremental version. What am I doing? Yeah, there you go. Incremental version. Yeah, I give a content view ID and we can see that the content view ID here is uh, three. I think yeah, it's three here. So I'll use that. Oops. I'll then give a version number. And this should so the what should happen is it'll try to it'll try to figure out what was previously exported to what was previously exported and automatically just do the deltas. So it knows that version 1.0 was previously exported out of this content view. So it's going to try to export 2.0 incrementally. So if I do a ls minus lh here, let's see. There's the 20 megabyte delta. Uh, so the, this is the, so you, this, you see that it's only 20 megabytes. The export is much smaller. So because it only contains the Catello repository, it only contains the deltas between the two versions. Uh, nothing changed between the other two repositories, so they didn't. They probably didn't contribute much to the export targz. Now, there, yeah. 
Now let me import this to my disconnected downstream satellite, All right? Uh, yeah, let me do that. Uh, so, yeah. So if you notice, all the files are in this directory. All the all the exports had seem to happen in this directory. So I what I'm going to do is I'm just going to SCP the entire thing over to my downstream satellite. I'm just going to SCP this directory to to my satellite downstream satellite. And one of the things with uh, one of pulp needs to be able to access this and use access the imports directory and use it to import stuff. So I'm going to put it to if you know to, let me. Or the pulp, sorry. Yeah, so you'll notice that there is this directory called import. So pulp will be able to access and import anything from this directory. Uh, we have we have in the installer would have installed it in such a way that the imports directory is always accessible by pulp. So let me SCP SCP the contents of the export to this imports directory. You go. Mm. Oh, sorry. I didn't give it. I didn't give it where it needs to copy. So, um, there you go. Uh, sorry. I okay. Yeah. Let. I wanted it to go to my warlib pulp imports. So I'll, I'll SCP it there again. There you go. All right. So here's my downstream server. Let me clear the screen here. So if I did, or if I did an LS on my warlib pulp import i see that my exports directory is there uh, you notice that the permission here is root root right so one of the one of the one of the things here is pulp and yeah let me also cd there just one second And let's do one of the one O's. I think 38, 40, okay. Yeah, okay. So one of the things Pulp does is when importing, it tries to, it'll combine all these four files into one tar -GZ. It'll merge all of them together and then try to import it. To facilitate that we need right permissions for Pulp on this directory. So I'm so I'm just going to change the ownership of everything under Warla pulp imports to pulp. Here you go uh, again. Okay, so let me do a ls minus lh here. Okay, so it's all it's all pulp now. So pulp should be able to read and write from this. All right. So let's start by importing version one o, the one that we chunked. So uh, let me do a pwd. Okay. Uh, before I start doing that, all right. One of the so let me go here. I do not have any importing org. I do not have an import organization. I my products are all sorry. I I need to recreate the product and the repository structure here. 
uh, for me to be able to import into them. So I ha I just create shell pro I I just create what are called shell products as in products that are not syncing from anything that do not have a URL. So shell shell repository. Sorry. So just just to show you how a shell repository would look. If I go my products, I'll just create a new repository. I don't know, foo of yum type. So this is just, uh, I'm just showing you how to, we create these dummy repositories. We call them shell repositories. Uh, now, these have to have the same names as these guys. So if my product was called prod, it has to be named prod. And if my product was, and if I had repositories called Candlepin, Catello, and Misc, I need to create shell repositories for those. Uh, this is something we might look to improve upon in the future. But right now, this is the uh, modus operandi, if you will. So let me, I'll, I'll show you a script that I have. Uh, CD. So I created a hammer script to test to to set up this. So to set this up, so I have like it creates an organization called import whatever random number, then puts a product name. It then creates repositories. It creates content views, right? So again, all it's it's not syncing anything. All it's doing is just creating content views and creating a product and an organization. So let me do this. So if I say import dot sh, so it should create it should create an org called import six two seven five. Uh, yeah. There you go. So let me let me go here to the downstream. So again, uh, okay, I will change it to this guy. There you go. It's created a product called Prod. It created three dummy repositories. If you click on any of these, there's no there should be there's no url there's no upstream url it's not syncing from anything it's purely managed via the import export process let me also go to the content views there's a view there's a content view called view that got generated by my import sh if you do a details you notice this interesting label called import only so when you create a content view where you can import stuff, we we have these we have this thing called import only tag that you flag that you put in. Uh, the reason here is we don't want people publishing uh, and messing with the import export process, uh, and so we have this import only flag that will that will prevent people from publishing a new version if they wanted. Uh, they can of course put it in the composite and publish that. Uh, All right, so let me start by importing importing the export I had. Um, so here's my downstream satellite again. So if I did clear, uh, let, let me get the path again if I. Four, what is it? Forty-five, I think. Yeah, yeah, that one. This guy. Uh, okay, I'm taking clear. Yeah. So again, when you you see this hammer content import sub command, that has the library and the version, and you can use these to import. There you go. 
So I'm going to start with a uh, content view. Let's get the content view ID again of the downstream satellite. The content view ID here is three. Yeah, OK, good. And I'll say, here's the path for my targc dump directory. So there you go. So this should this should start the import process. It takes a little bit of time. Uh, but you should be able to see progress here also if I did details and versions. There you see you, you, it is importing right now. It'll soon update once the import is completed. It's it's updating this real time. So, so you see there are 26 packages and eight errata and 15 module streams. They all got imported in this content view. Now, if you go to products and you clicked on the products, you will see that the associated repositories to that content view also got updated. It got this one got the 23 packages, Adorada, and this one got the three packages and two package groups. And yeah, so let me I need to continue along. So I also wanted to show you this directory. So so remember how it had like the chunked files. There you go. But now it's combined. So Pulp automatically combined everything together and created the 400 megabyte RGZ that, that it imports. Finally, uh, let me let me also demonstrate the incremental to just to show you that even that that works just as well. So if you do a hammer content import version uh let me get the oh sorry i got forgot the path um, or the help imports so yeah there you go so this is the smaller incremental export in, incremental export let's import this guy this guy also so You just change the path to this. There you go. And if I Okay, so let's go back to the downstream organization again. Let's see. Let's see if it updated the product here. Let's first check the repositories we had. You see how Catello repository got updated. That came from version two o when we from the version two o import. So if we went to content views, we clicked on the views. We click on version version two, and you notice right off the bat here that there's 65 packages, eight errata, 15 module streams. So this is just because of the inclusion of the Catello uh, Catello, pack, uh, Catello repository. So if you see the yeah, it's the same set of same three repositories in this version. So uh, next, I would like to demonstrate exporting and importing the library. And then we'll come back to questions and answers, I guess. Uh, so in my upstream organization, right? In my upstream organization, if I did products and this product has three repositories, now let's assume I didn't care about content view. I'm just using the default content view that the organization has. 
So I just want to import whatever is in the library repository, or well, export and import whatever is in the library repository. So I'm going to I'm going to demo that now. Uh, so I I will. So uh, complete again. So so you see this library subcommand. So we we can export the complete library, and you can give it you can give it the organization ID, the chunked size. There's also this I forgot to mention this. There's this interesting flag called the destination server. So assume you had uh, one upstream satellite and you were sync you're connecting that you're updating content in like ten disconnected satellites. What what will happen is uh, you this will give us give it give us a good way to book book uh, this will be a way of bookkeeping. So for example, if my disconnected satellite had uh, sat sat one sat two, I would give a destination server parameter and say sat one. So what happens is that next time you do an incremental update, if you give it the destination server, it tracks what was previously already imported or exported and just does the incremental. So it's useful there, but it's optional. So if you're, if you're, if you're having only one disconnected satellite, you really don't need to use this. Um, yeah, okay. The, the complete library takes us organization. So we give it the organization name or label. So you know, let me do a hammer organization list. I forget, forgot the name. So there you go. I do a hammer content export complete the library and give it organization label. Export 21791. Okay, there you go. So if I do an LS again, I should. I should see all the, I should see, I'm guessing around, let's see. Yeah, I should see around 68 megabytes because 20 megabytes of the Catello, so it has all the three repositories. So that's why you see a 68 megabyte output here. Um, one thing I wanted to mention about export library. So what happens is under the hoods, the way this works is, Here's my upstream. The way this works is if I go to content views, there is a new content view created called export library. This is a special one we use. So what happens is under the hoods, Catello just creates an export library content view, adds, adds, the, adds all the repositories at that point of time, at that point in time, publishes it, publishes it and exports that. So this had version 1.1, one, one, it published it, so it had version 1.0, and Catello automatically exported that. We we did this, we took this approach because we wanted the published way to be one, like we want the content we published to be similar, whether we do the version or whether we do the library. Uh, so let, let me, so as we saw, we, this has 68 megabytes. Now, let me SCP this guy over. Okay. To my downstream satellite here. SCP minus R. Okay. To my downstream satellite. 
What are the help imports? And so let me let us take a look at the downstream sideline in this directory where I'll live. I'll be imports library. So there you go, ls. And you see it's again all root. So we need to we need to change this to say, hey, change the ownership of this directory to pulp. There you go. There you go. So it's all the ownership has been changed to pulp here. Uh, now let me do the actual import again. Uh, let me see if I have an organization already created in my downstream for this, uh, which is the downstream satellite. I only have default and import. I can I can import it into the default organization, but basically I would still need to create. I would still need to create a, a product called prod and three repositories with these names. So I'm just going to reuse my import as it script, just create a new organization. Because that, so if I did import.sh, this creates a new organization, 29643. Again, it just creates the three repositories in the product. Uh, I. It's it's still creating the content view. That's not necessary at all because we are not using that. Parth, I have a question from from Jeremy for you, if you. Okay. okay. So Jeremy is asking: Will I always need to change ownership of import directory manually, or will it be automatic in the future? Uh, right, right now it's manual because the copy process itself is manual, right? Like you're copying in the in reality, you would be taking this in a disk somewhere, going somewhere else, copying from there. There's no automatic way to do it. Uh, the and I think as long as this directory is readable, as long as stuff inside pulp varlet pulp imports is readable, if you don't have any chunked files, I think I think we should be okay. But if you have chunked files, pulp wants write access on the directory. So you you would want to do this all the time. Like you, every time you copy something, you probably will have to update the pulp uh, the ownership. Thanks. Does it make sense? Yes. Okay. Thanks, Partha. Okay. Uh, so there was a yeah here. Let me do again products. Let me do. There's this new org now, 29643. You see it has it has not it has like the shell repositories that we wanted. Now let me import it into the library repository here. So we our stuff was in this directory where all the pulp imports library. So I would say hammer content import and you see a library sub command there sorry uh, I should have okay yeah hammer content import library you you tell it the organization it needs to import and I think the org was import 29643 okay Import two nine six four three, and you can then say path. So you're saying import from this path. So as this process is continuing, I'll, I want to show you something here. In my downstream organization, import 2963, if I went to content views, you will notice this new thing called import library, new content view. 
So th again, this is very similar to a <laughs> to a version import. So the so the way the way the the, the way library import works is it it's actually piggybacking off the content view import process here that we already have. I just wanted to demo that. So there. So yeah, let let me let's let's check out the version. So the import operation is complete. Let me check the versions. So there you go. Uh, products. There you go. So it imported the library fully. So it had this had three packages. This has 39 packages, Gitello, and MISC has 23 packages. And incremental works in a similar fashion. There's not that much different. You would do hammer incremental and then a hammer incremental library. So you would say you would actually export it similarly. So it's a uh, upstream, sorry. You would say hammer content export incremental library L. So yeah, it's the same set of things. You can give it an org ID and it'll incrementally export. Uh, yeah, that is about the main main thing that I wanted to cover today. Uh, I have a I wanted to show you one more thing. Uh, so if I if I do a complete version, you see this uh, parameter called lifecycle environment. So the idea here is this. Um, so in my upstream organization, let's say let's say I had a lifecycle environment. Let me create one for for fun. So dev, okay. I have a dev lifecycle environment. Now I have a content view here, right? I I go here and I say promote the third one, promote this guy to dev. So let's say in your development or production environment, you have the you have the gold standard version that you want to use. So what you can do is you can say hammer. Uh, sorry, in my upstream satellite here, okay. So you can say hammer content export. Uh, let me get that. I forgot the details. Sorry. Organization name is export two one seven one. Okay. Delete version. Uh, export two one seven one. Right. And two one seven nine one. Sorry. And my environment is called dev, okay? Seven, nine, one. Life cycle. Environment. Calls dev. And the content view name here is view, okay? Sorry. Yeah. So when I run this command, it should it should figure out what version was published to the content view version uh, to the lifecycle environment dev, and only export that. So if I did an ls here. You notice that it only has the Catello one because my the version I promoted only had 39 packages. The version I promoted to dev had, let's see how many repos it had. It had only one repository with 39 packages. So you, 
what you see here is that the 20 megabytes here, uh, the, the 20 megabyte file here, is just that. Uh, so I, th I so that's that's kind of a useful thing if you have like a product if you have a version that you have you have tested and you put it to prod and now you want to just export that and import that. So the other thing here is we have exported it here, but when you import it in the downstream satellite, you will have to you can import it only to the library right now. We have not we do not we do not know of the existence of a dev environment. Uh, in the importing satellite, so that's something we that's something we might tweak in the future and automatically create a dev environment for you if needed. But for for the first cut, it's it's you you will have to import it into the library. Um, I think that's pretty much what I had for my demo. Any questions? Any concerns? Thanks. Partha, I would maybe we can just leave one minute just so that people can have the opportunity to ask questions by the looks of the stream. Um, there okay. is not much of a delay. Um, okay. So we'll just give one minute and give people a chance to type if they want to type something. Sure. There is a super annoying bug in Google Meet at the moment where, depending on where you log in from, it won't go full screen. So I'm going to have to, hopefully that gets solved. Yeah, full screen doesn't um, get rid of the bottom panel, you know, where you oh, yeah. have a mic and stuff. Yeah, so that's very annoying. Um, I do not see any questions so far. Yeah. So, uh yeah, feel free to email the ask us in the community if you guys have any questions on the import and export presentation. Uh, I'm also working on a document. Uh, hopefully, we'll have a blog or something like that uh, detailing the the same the, this workflow. Excellent. Um, yeah, and also if you are watching this at a later stage and you just want to ask a question feel free to drop a comment into um on the in the youtube ch channel as well and i'll make sure that it gets answered and i'll just i don't think that there is anything for you partha so thank you very much for your time today and for giving this deep dive into into your work for the last while and thank you to all of you who've been watching on the live stream and again any questions any comments any other ideas for deep dives that you'd like to see this year just write to us on the foreman community discourse and we'll we'll set it up thank you very much thank you and we're done